All right, this weekend I'm going to build some transistors and integrated circuits at home. I'm getting tired of people claiming that my uh, transistors are faked and or writing that um, what good is building one transistor at home. So with a little luck, I'll make some more advanced circuits this weekend. So right now the furnace is coming up to temperature. It's a little Lindbergh tube furnace with a quartz tube in it. It's getting nice and toasty warm in there. It needs to go up to a thousand degrees C, although you can do diffusion as low as 800 degrees C. It just takes a really long time. This is going to be my steam source for growing the thick oxide. This is my etching rig over here. To the left is a container of hydrofluoric acid. The center one is a rinse and the last one is also a rinse. You can see how there's stair step there. So if there's any HF on the wand that goes through that slot in the top, it'll get rinsed off. Now, before you get all preachy about hydrofluoric acid, I know everyone's heard the uh, urban legends of someone getting a drip of hydrofluoric acid on themselves and then running to a swimming pool and jumping in and still dying or their bones dissolving. I am using rust and stain remover from the grocery store. Um, you can also get hydrofluoric acid or uh, glass etchant. That's the little bottle to the left. That'll do the same thing. Um, with a little common sense, I think we'll be okay if they let little old ladies clean rust off of their sink with it. You know, just don't swallow it, dump it in your eyes. You know, common sense. All right, so first step, we're gonna do a hot probe test on a wafer that, that I'm gonna cleave. I'm gonna try cleaving up a 100P type wafer and I'm gonna confirm that using a uh, volt ohm meter and a hot point probe. So once I get that set up, I'll record that. Okay, here's our wafer. Um, we, we can determine if it's a P-type wafer in theory if it has a major flat and a minor flat 90 degrees um, a, a, away from the major flat. But that's not always guaranteed and especially since these are off eBay they could have been doped in some other way or have epitaxial layers so we're going to have to check that. So first to cleave the wafer, we need to cleave it into smaller pieces so it'll fit into my little tiny uh, diffusion furnace. All we need to do is just nick one edge and it should break along the, the lattice lines. I'm just using a pair of metal tweezers here. And there it goes, a nice even break along the wafer. Now, in theory, we should be able to break it this direction also at a 90 degree angle doesn't always break. Yeah, there we go. That was pretty nice. So I'm going to break this into smaller pieces and that's what everything's going to be um, based off of. So I'll come back after uh, breaking this wafer up and we'll do the hot probe test. Okay, here's a piece of wafer that kind of broke in a funny way, but we're going to use this for the hot point test. First, I'm going to run it through the HF etch because when you leave a wafer out in the atmosphere, it's going to grow a, uh, a native oxide layer, and we need to remove that so we can make good electrical contact. So first, we drop it through here. We go into the HF. We'll just let that uh, do its magic for a, a few seconds there. I'm not quite sure how thick the oxide layer is, but it's probably not very thick. <clears throat> because um, there's little to no color on the wafer. And that's one way you can determine if uh, there's an oxide layer, if there's um, kind of an iridescent color. And we'll go over that a little bit later as I start growing oxides. All right, chances are good that there's no native oxide now. So I'm going to run it through a couple rinses and I'll spare you that and I'm going to pull it out and dry it. Uh oh. Oh, what am I going to do? My wand fell inside. Oh, I have to risk the hydrofluoric acid. All right, I'll be back. Okay, here's something really quick. Let me see if I can uh, adjust the focus here. Now, when silicon is uh, bare, no oxide, becomes hydrophobic, means that water will beat up on it. 
And I've just pulled this out of the, uh, the etching tank and the water's beating up. So I must have the native oxide removed. All right, now I'm gonna dry this off and really come back and do the hot uh, point probe. And oh, I didn't die having to go in there messing with the hydrofluoric acid. My bones do feel a little gelatinous though. Okay, before I go on, I should say that I'm using Aquafina for my rinse water. It's vapor distilled, only the finest for my wafers. Um, it's better than tap water, and it's almost as good as uh, uh, buying the lab-grade distilled water, I suppose. I've made working devices with Aquafina before, so I'll, I will stick with it. All right, for the hot probe test, I'm going to use a soldering iron and this awesome fluke meter that they sent me. Look at this thing. It's so cool. Thank you guys. Uh, so awesome. All right, so I'm going to hold it against my soldering iron with a positive side. So I make a, a path down to the heated tip and then I'm going to touch the ground lead to the wafer. And I'm expecting, since this was supposed to be a P-type wafer, that I will see a negative deflection on the voltmeter. Um, if I see a positive deflection, it's, it will be an N-type wafer and uh, might have had something done to it. If I see no deflection, then uh, perhaps I didn't get the oxide off. So here we go. Let's see if I can juggle all this without getting burned. All right. Oh boy. It's tricky. All right, that's warm. Oh, maybe I should have rigged this up a bit better. All right, here we go. Oh, I'm seeing a negative deflection, but it went away. Let me try that again. Yeah, definitely a negative deflection on there. All right, great, so that's a P-type wafer. In another video, at some point, I'll go into why the carriers move away from the hot soldering iron tip, but uh, for this, it's just kind of a vlog entry. So the next step, is now that my furnace is up to about 800 degrees C and, and rising, I'll go ahead and put the wafer pieces in and grow a thick oxide on them. And in the meantime, I will play with photoresist and try to work on that process a bit, which I've never done with uh, silicon wafers before. It always failed. And uh, the next video you'll see will hopefully be successful photolithography and uh, thick oxide. All right. Um, oh, and it takes hours to grow this oxide, so don't expect a video for a little while. I figure you guys would like to see loading of the wafers. So I flipped up the little piece of wafer that I used to cover the end of the tube. There's the quartz tube in there. Here's a wafer piece held with my stainless steel tweezers contaminating everything. You know, I made working devices, so it's not that big of a deal. And I just slide it on in there. And once I have all these pieces in there, um, I will turn on the tea kettle and make some uh, steam and just let it blow up in there. The steam will accelerate the oxide growth so I don't have to wait here an eternity for the thick, thick oxide to grow. If you just do it in the normal atmosphere, it grows really slow. All right, this is really the end of the video this time. All right, bye. See you guys maybe tomorrow with uh, the next steps, if I don't die from uh, all the hydrofluoric acid and gelatinous bones.